Okay, so that's some theory about Markov chains. So we'd best look at an example now. And so the simplest example we could start with is a Markov chain that just has two states, which we'll call 0 and 1. So here's our example where we have two states, which I'm calling 0 and 1. So on the left-hand side here, you see we have the transition matrix here. That's the transition matrix. Note that the rows add up to 1, as they must, because the, the top row added up is the probability we go from 0 to somewhere, and the bottom row added up is the probability we go from 1 to somewhere, and they both have to be 1. And on the left-hand side here, we've got something we call the transition diagram, which is just a useful picture to help us see what's going on. We have a blob for each of the states. We have a blob for zero and a blob for one. We have arrows going between them that represent uh, the entries in the transition matrix. So for example, if we look at this alpha in the top left of the transition matrix, that's P01, which is the probability of going from zero to one. And here's the arrow from zero to one. And there's the alpha labeling it. So that transition matrix tells us what the uh, transition diagram should look like, and vice versa. Um, it doesn't come into it here, but just as a note, if we ever have a transition probability that's zero, so you can't go from state i to state j, uh, then we don't draw the line at all. I guess you could draw the line and label it with zero, but it's quicker uh, not to label it at all. I suggest in the notes that this could be used as a model for something like, say, a broken printer each day. For example, we could let state 0 be broken and state 1 be working. And we could say that uh, at each, on each day, we move, uh, the broken printer gets fixed with probability alpha, or the working printer breaks with probability beta. And that would give us this Markov chain here for the broken and working printer each day. So let's see how we can uh, answer some questions with this. So first example is this. Suppose the printer is working on Monday. So the printer is working on Monday. What's the probability that it's working also on Wednesday? What is probability working on Wednesday? Well, if we call Monday day n, then Wednesday is day n plus 2. So what this is asking for is the property that's working on day n plus 2, so n x n plus 2 equals 1, because we said 1 is the working state, given x n equals 1. Oh, well, this is tricky, because if that were xn plus 1 equals 1, we'd say it's just the uh, transition probability, 1 minus beta. But unfortunately, we're going two steps ahead. So we could call this perhaps a two-step transition probability. It's not just p11, which is the one-step transition probability. It's p11 over in brackets 2, which is the probability we get there in two steps. So what are we going to do? Well... If you've been paying attention on this course, you'll know that there's one really important principle that we keep returning to over and over again. And that principle is condition on the first step, as in what happens on the first step. So from xn equals 1, what will happen on the first step to xn n plus 1? It might be that we break that day and go over to 0, or it might be that we're fine that way and stay at 1. In other words, maybe on the first step we go to xn plus 1 equals 1, in which case then we'll want to know what's the probability we go to xn plus 2 equals 1, given xn equals 1, and plus 1 equals 1 and xn equals 1, or maybe on that first step we'll go to xn plus 1 equals 0, maybe the printer will break. And then we'll want to know the probability that it gets mended the next day. Now, first thing we can do is we can apply the Markov property here, right? 
to say that these two terms on the right-hand side, we've got a probability of xn plus 2, given xn plus 1 and xn, but the Markov property says it doesn't matter how we got to xn plus 1, so we can ignore that term and that term because of the Markov property, which tells us it only matters where we are at time n plus 1, and it doesn't matter how we got there. Ah, but this is looking rather good now, because now we've got we've written down just a bunch of one-step transition probabilities. And we know what they are, right? This is, a, let's say, a P11 and another P11 for the top two terms, the probability of going to 1 to 1. And then for the second two terms, we've got a probability of going from 1 to 0 and a probability of going to 0 to 1. If we look those up, then, either in our transition matrix or look at them on our transition diagram, uh, we can see what we've got here. We've got uh, P11 is 1 minus beta. So two of those is 1 minus beta squared. P10, the probability from 1 to 0, is beta. And the probability back from 0 to 1 is alpha. So that gives us the answer. Uh, there's another way of thinking of what we did here, which is we were looking for getting from 1 to 1 in two steps. So if we come back to our diagram up here and ask, what's the property going from 1 to 1 in two steps? Well, there's two ways we could have done that, right? We could start at 1, stick at 1, then stick at 1. So that would be two moves from 1 to 1. And so that would be 1 minus beta squared. The other way we could get from 1 to 1 in two steps is that we could go to 0 and then come back. That would also get us 1 to 1. And so that would be beta on the way there, um, alpha on the way back, or alpha beta. So we've got two, two ways of doing it, the alpha beta way or the 1 minus beta squared way. And if we scroll back down and look at our answer, that was, that's what we've got. We've got the 1 minus beta squared way and we've got the beta alpha way. So you could think of that as we're summing up the two paths of length 2 from 1 to 1. Now let's think about what we were doing there in a more general setting.